FBI gag orders are ruled constitutional, Android ransomware threatens to leak your personal data, and Verizon customers had a data breach. All that coming up now on ThreatWire. Greetings, I am Shannon Morse, and this is ThreatWire for July 18, 2017. This is your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. Real quick, make sure to hit subscribe and hit that little notification bell button to see the show as soon as it goes live, and make sure to check out patreon.com slash threatwire to see how you can support the show. It's a really great way to contribute to lots of your favorite podcasts, not just us. Definitely check it out. And now, on to the news. The U.S. Court of Appeals for the Ninth Circuit ruled on Monday that tech companies cannot disclose requests they receive from the FBI regarding surveillance orders and warrants issued. This means that tech companies are still under gag orders whenever they receive national security letters requesting information from government agencies, also known as NSLs. NSLs, which require no warrant again, were effectively updated in 2015 with the passing of the USA Freedom Act. Now, while the USA Freedom Act did expire bulk data collection, it also included the ability for agencies to submit national security letters, or NSLs, to any tech companies that they request data from. In this case, phone network operator Credo and content distribution firm Cloudflare both sued the government, saying that receiving NSLs and not being allowed to disclose the request to the public was a violation of First Amendment rights. Unless the NSL becomes declassified, as we have seen with a few from Apple, Twitter, and a few other tech companies, the company is officially under a gag order, and sometimes that's indefinitely. The San Francisco court with a three-judge panel ruled unanimously that the gag orders can stay and NSLs can remain undisclosed. They determined this by arguing that disclosing them could put the national security of the country in danger, interfere with investigations, or danger the safety of persons involved. The EFF was representing Cloudflare and Credo in this case, and as such, is considering options for next steps to challenge the ruling. Windows ransomware is not the only type of ransomware you need to keep an eye out for. Dubbed Leaker Locker, this ransomware only works on Android and was recently discovered on, of course, the Google Play Store. Leaker Locker was first discovered by McAfee, and it doesn't encrypt data, but instead threatens to send a user's data to all of their phone and email contacts. If a user is hit with Leaker Locker, it'll demand $50 and threaten to send out photos, messages, web browsing history, emails, location details, contact numbers, and a little bit more to any contacts in that person's contact list. The malware was discovered in two different applications, Wallpapers Blur HD and Booster and Cleaner Pro, which together have about 15,000 downloads and average good ratings. Leaker Locker, hidden inside of these apps, gains permission to manage calls, messages, and access contacts, and eventually locks the home screen. Now, while the ransom may just be a threat since the data isn't actually encrypted, by allowing permissions when the app is downloaded, it does gain some access to data on the phone. McAfee recommends not paying the ransom, and Google Play has removed the two apps. So the moral of the story, if you choose to download a wallpaper app, be skeptical if it asks for weird permissions. Obviously, it doesn't need access to your contacts. Don't just blindly approve all permissions requested, or you could find yourself dealing with ransomware on your device. A third-party company based in Israel left up to 14 million Verizon customers user data on an unprotected Amazon S3 server. The company, called Nice, at least in English it's called Nice, has large corporate sector customers such as Verizon and works with customer engagement and financial compliance tools. The data belonged to anybody who called Verizon's customer service line in the past six months. UpGuard security researcher Chris Vickery discovered it in late June and told Verizon about it. The phone company took about a week to secure the data. Now, the data includes names, cell phone numbers, and account PIN numbers for each and every customer, and if you have that PIN, you could access a customer's account. Along with email and home addresses, there's account balances, service types, etc., etc., available in that data. This breach of data is quite similar to a 
recent story we also reported on, and the info was obviously unprotected on an easily guessable web address that was publicly facing. Again, Verizon has stated that there is no indication the data was compromised by any outside parties, though I am curious, how did they come to that conclusion? Thank you again to all the wonderful, amazing, glorious people out there who contribute to patreon.com slash threatwire. If you want to spare a little bit of change, it all helps keep Threatwire completely independent and ad-free. We now have an audio-only RSS feed, we have extra content every week, and we have early access for our patrons. We might even feature your adorable fur babies just like these brand new ones this week in an upcoming episode. And remember, of course, patrons, to share your favorite security-focused news stories in the Patreon community tab to get featured in the show, and I will give you a shout out as well. And of course, if you cannot donate, you can hit that subscribe button, you can set the notification bell, you can tweet about it on Twitter, and just use the hashtag ThreatWire so that we can see it, and I might even retweet you. And with that, I am Shannon Morris, and I will see you on the internet.